Hi, everyone. This is Robert Rutherford. Welcome to Off the Wall. We have a, another interesting guest here today. We have Mike Torres with Martin Brothers Marco Wall. Mike has been in the industry for a long time, and he's run some incredible jobs here in the Los Angeles area. Hi, Mike. How are you doing today? How's it going? Nice. Nice to be here. I thought we were going to have a little <laughs> learning process, but they're no right way. off the hip. No, <laughs> we're, we're going to go right into this thing. It's good stuff. Going to go right into it. Mike, you have run some incredible jobs in the past. Um, I know one of them was the Disney Concert Hall right. in downtown Los Angeles. And I remember seeing the mock-ups that yeah. you guys made on that project. Yeah. They were super intense. And yeah. uh, the thing was a slam dunk for you. You did yeah. a great job. Yeah, I don't know what the slam dunk. They had a, a lot of learning. You know, technology was at the front end, right? So we're having to deal with... Um, you know, it was Katia. Now it's BIM, but back then it was Katia, and it was new for us. So it was new for you know the the foreman, for the general foreman, and especially for the workers. So it was a it was definitely a language barrier from computer to the field. Yes, and and you actually you embraced that and and took it on head first. And and I remember you showing me those programs, <laughs> yeah. how you guys could yeah. just go like cut holes through the building and, and yeah. know exactly where the stud was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's now, you know, second nature, it's second nature with like Revit and all the programs that we have now back then we've never seen it. Right. So when, anytime you get a job with geometry yes, and you have to see, you know, you want to see inside the building or take a layer off, see if the ball, the wall has any kind of geometry just to build it. You can't do it on 2d drawings. There's mm -hmm. no, does no justice. Mm -hmm. So, it was new to us, and now it's like you know, second nature. We, we need, we go ask, go to our BIM department, and we ask, you know, what we need, you know, to actually help us uh, with aids to, to build the walls. So it's it's gone a long way. Yeah, it's mainstream now. Mm -hmm. You know, you were on the cutting edge yeah. back back when when that stuff first came out, okay. and it was really incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, we had a lot. It was a you know, it's, it's not just one person. It's you know, it's teamwork. We had. You know, the main um, general form was Gino, you know, Capra. He was, he was, his innovation and his hard work, you know, it, it paid off. And all he wanted was, you know, followers to, to learn this. And some people adapted, mm -hmm. you know, which I was one of them. And other people like ran, they, it was too much. And they would rather, you know, build, you know, straight walls and go home, be happy, you know, peaceful, less stress. Yes. And it's kind of, that's how it was built you know, the little passion, you know, challenge. I've always loved, uh, you know, solving problems or something you can't do. You know, that word can't, it's, you know, it's, it's construction. So we, we can do it. It's just, you got to think outside of the box. Yeah. Well, can't's not in your vocabulary. <laughs> no, no. You, so, you're, you're going to get it done. Yeah. You're yeah. Gonna, it's, it's it kind done. of like, you know, it's the way you're, you're built, you know, especially for like the younger generation, you know, you go home with it at night, you know, people say, you know, you know, leave it at the job site, but there's something that you want to solve and you can't and your mind's rolling at night. You know, you're tossing, turning and what you do is you wake up early in the morning and you head to work and you try to, you know, problem shoot it. I mean, I've done that several times, like with your company, right? There's something that I know there's something easier way. And a lot of it comes with experience. Absolutely. That's the main with experience. A lot of times I know I came your way, you know, for some help with some things. And I think we created bunch of different shapes you know at different times just of every anything you know whether it be sheet metal aluminum and and it's outside of the box it's something that we brought to the table and it solved an issue and that's that's kind of what drives me something that um you know something that hasn't been done before you know there's a lot of jobs mm -hmm. you know they're they're more and more these jobs are getting more complicated and then you, you put in schedule so you have to be able to do it not only hard work but do it fast yeah and those do those those two don't go hand in hand because because then you start lacking the, you know, your tolerances and yes. then you, you give a bad product. Correct. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, um, that's the uh, fine, that's the, um, how do I say it? Like, um, it's always the hard part when you're pushing the schedule. Yes. And then you start slacking on the tolerance. And, exactly. And ultimately, you know, we're trying to deliver the product to the client, you know, a good job. So yes, it's always the. The constraint on any job, the schedule. So, Mike, who got you into the business, in, into the lath and plaster business? So I had, um, when I was actually in, um, that's a good question. 
when I was in, uh, and you know, we always talk about, you know, people from, you know, skills, college, uh, like we say, I just came from, from high school. I really had pretty good grades in high school, but you know, just really understanding. And I remember I was playing football, high school football, and I had my, uh, one of my brother's friends was in the trade and, uh, he came up to me and, you know, during the game, he said, you know, when you get out of school, come see me, I'll get you a job. So I embraced that when I was out of high school, the first day after I finished, I went up to, uh, Gordon Stevens and, you know, mm-hmm. Gordon, Yeah. he, uh, he got me a job, uh, with, you know, perlite, perlite plastering, you know, back mm-hmm. in the day. Yeah. And, um, I started working my first, I kind of growing up, I have like three, like kind of like mentors that really, I was fortunate to have some really good teachers and, you know, growing up as your apprenticeship, you know, you really want those teachers that, you know, they teach you the, the ropes when it was hard. Right. Yes. So I had, I was first put with, um, Tim Replogo, which, you know, passed away a couple years ago, mm-hmm. but he, he actually, I was, I worked with him for like my first year and he actually gave me a lot of like, believe it or not, like life lessons of, of the trade. So, you know, he's, you know, it's the typical things that I don't think a lot of the younger generation here, but like your name, he taught me your name stays with you your entire life. Yes. So you can't tarnish it. You, you and how you tarnish it, you go, it's pretty easy. You know, it's, it's the easy stuff. You can't be late. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can't miss and you just, you know, a rule of thumb, whoever, whoever you're working for, make the person above you look good. So, and that goes for anywhere from apprentice, lead guy, foreman, make, you know, general foreman to make your estimator. It just, just always works. Make the guy above you look good and you'll always succeed. So Absolutely. he told me a lot of, uh, a lot of good, um, things to make it in, the in the, the trade. And then I, then later on in, uh, middle of my apprenticeship, I got to, to Gordon and Gordon was known as, you know, the, the rough guy, right. Mm-hmm. The old school. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, um, he kind of taught me my, his, what I got from him was my rough edge of, you know, production, go push people, you know, teaching people. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I, I've, I've learned through him probably through examples of his toughness. You know, I, I remember one time we were carpooling and, you know, I had, I asked him, I remember this my entire life, but I asked him, you know, is there water at the job site? And I just seen like steam coming from his head. And I got like yelled at and he was just like, you know, you want water, you go buy it before you carpool. Don't ask me again. And the car was like quiet for like the rest of the 45 minutes. And I didn't know what to do. Uh, and he, he would, uh, he just taught me the ropes of, of kind of like running guys, you know, and stuff. He gave me a little bit of responsibility. And then I learned a lot from, from, you know, later on my managerial and a lot of my high tech organization with, with Gino, Gino. Uh, Mm -hmm. just, just learn. So, uh, one thing I've taken from everyone is, you know, never be afraid to learn experience is the key in construction. Um, you know, I, I value anybody's experience and I'm not afraid. I I mean, I learn weekly. Yes. If I take, you know, I may be with someone that I have working with, I've never even known. And we may talk for six hours, but I take one thing that he tells me and I'll, it's new information and I'm not afraid to learn especially with this industry, the way it's changing, yes. you know, by the, you know, you know the codes, yep. uh, the different types of jobs. Um, you know, there's, you know, Oshpod is a totally different beast, but there's, there's just different rules, you know, even the safety. I mean, there's mm-hmm. so many things have changed from when I first started. You have to, you have to evolve. I mean, you have to change. I, you know, I've actually recently had a couple of coworkers that I haven't seen like in 20 years. And I think they call me softy locks. I, I became soft. They call me because they remember me when I was, you know, you know, young and young and rolling, you know, pushing the guys a little more mm-hmm. stern, but you know, through the, the times, you know, with, you know, all the, the bullying and the, the, the harassment and everything, you can't do a lot of things we used to do. The way I was brought up, you can't mm-hmm. do it no more. No. So, it, so it's, so I feel for the, the new generation because it's, you, you have to really like know, the whole trade is based, you know, on you know, who you know. It's usually family, friends, or mm-hmm. you know, you know, it's all intermingled with people that you know. Yes. And unless you know that person, that you can be a little more harder on and really teach them the, the skills. Uh, it, it's tough because you can't be hard on these guys. And 
And I do agree that when you're on these, I've been predominantly on a lot of um, you know big projects, you know, and when you get the bulk of these, you know, apprentices, it, it's it's hard to teach all of them. You have 30 apprentices, but what happens, you'll get a, a handful that gravitate wanting to learn. And those are the ones you, you, you kind of teach more um, the ropes because, um, you know, it's just the mechanics. It's hard. You know, there's a lot to learn. And if you, if every, everyone needs to just, you know, it's a, you know, you always say it's the career, right? You mm -hmm. can, your yeah. friends uh, can go do some other warehouse job, but this is a career. I mean, it's taken my, my, you know, my six kids through college. I mean, it's a career and you can take it for what it's worth. You can be happy, stress-free, be that nice journeyman, you know, making a decent wage with benefits, or you can take it up the next level, you know, lead guy, general foreman, PM. It's never ending. It's how long, whatever you want it to be. Absolutely. So, it, well, you, you can take it to your own business. Correct. If you want to. Correct. It, the sky's the limit. Correct. And it's always been the same way with the apprentices. You know, there's just a handful of them that mm -hmm. you can you can see it right mm -hmm. away that they have that hustle in them. Correct. And, yeah. um, you know, when back in the day when the guys were hard on you, it built character. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, it, it, it did. I mean, I, you know, when we have, um, you know, I remember, I just remember there was two apprentices and there was like six journeymen. And it was Friday. They waved at us and they said, roll everything up. And I'm talking six welding leads through scaffold. It took us about two hours on our own time. It was, it was after, it was like, they want to see who's going to win. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my other apprentice, he took off. He just said, you know, screw this. This is bull crap. And, you know, I was, you know, thinking, you know, my you know, mentor, Tim, you know, tell me just, it'll get better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't bend. So I did all that stuff. So two hours and, you know, that was just a something that I learned. You always learn from something. That was sure. a learning experience. And nowadays, you're limited on teaching good character, good common practices with apprentices because, you know, you get scolded. You can't do that no more. This is, you know, everybody has rights, right? So, yeah, yeah everybody yeah. has the, the the rules. And it's to a point. I mean, if you want to learn, my like my, I always preach, if you want to go big, you know, follow my lead. Sometimes it, it may be not good maybe staying after a little bit not because uh we want to it's just something the job needs mm -hmm. that we have to do sure and you follow my lead I'll, I'll you follow me i'll take you a long way and that's kind of hurt me because a lot of my my main apprentices that i've brought up I end up losing them because they actually become good and they run their own work so then you're at square one again teaching the kids which is it's, it's good for them because you know they're they're going off on their own and they're they're you know in our company they're all, you know, running their work and it's, it's good because they're, you know, they're providing for their family. And I think that's the ultimate goal. Um, you know, making sure we get home safely yeah. to our, our family, but they can't be apprentices forever. Correct. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're actually doing the industry yeah. a favor yeah. by teaching these guys, bring, taking them under your wing Correct. and showing them the ropes and yeah. showing them the tricks that, you know, and things yeah. that you've learned. Yeah. Yeah. There's, you know, and those are all, I mean, there's a lot of sayings that we, we've we heard from different people. And and I just wish, because I, I have a boy that's 28 years old. He's at the NFL, the Rams Stadium. And I feel so, um, you know, I don't say it, but I feel so proud when he comes to me asking me some questions. And, and I feel it's a good feeling when I can uh, pass on some knowledge that I've learned that I usually don't, it's hard to share, but. Unless a person you're working hand in hand, uh, like he, he, you know, there's always that thing, different journeymen will have different ways. And I go, you use that to your advantage. You're going to see different ways to build uh, a soffit. Yes. And you take your, you, you make your own way and you can combine the methods. You can do whatever. Cause there's no, there ain't a, there ain't a book on how to string a line. How, there's not a book of how to set an elevation. There's just common practices and you learn and you pick the best way. And, uh, and that's the hard part where, you know, the new generation, you know, what should I do first? And, and, you know, it's pretty funny when I, I have a good, I think I have a good way to, to explain, but it's always what I would do. You know, you always put it in a, like a third person sure. and then they take the lead and the next thing you know, they're, Oh, this is easy. You know, it's fast and it's, you know, there's other approaches. There's other ways you could tell the guys do this, do that. Then you become a, you know, hard guy to work with. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's, it's a, 
it's a, and then you get the, the different, you know, it's just like a, a team sport. You get different players that react different. Some carpenters in the trade, they don't, they don't do well with yelling. Some need to be nurtured a little quieter. Some needs, some people need to be told twice, you know, re, mm -hmm. re reaffirm, making sure you tell them there's any questions ask mm -hmm. because someone won't ask the questions and it's built wrong. Right. Right. So there's a, uh, you know, it's just the different carpenters have a different way to explain, but all these, all these lessons or, uh, things that I've learned, I don't feel it's being shared out in the field to get a lot of these, um, you know, the young journeymen progressed to at the level that we were, because we, we were made to be, you know, good. You have to know this by this day. Yes. You have to do that, you know, by this. And, you know, back in the day, we weren't, they didn't set quotas. They were just said you, you, you they were stern or they taught you, you have to get production, mm -hmm. not so much get a, a, a quota on things. And I think that's where you've always learned, you know, it's, it's the money, right? It's the yardage, it's the footage. It's, you know, be the top, top guy. And then, you know, when recessions come, you'll learn because they want to keep the top guys. Absolutely. So, and I don't know if that's being relayed to all the younger apprentices right now, uh, enough mm -hmm. because we can't, we can't drill in their head you know, you got to work hard. You got to work hard because they never been through the recession. Mm -hmm. And that's some of the hardest times I've had in the trade is, you know, having these big jobs and, you know, winding down and having to, you know, replace them with foreman because our company is getting a little, you know, slower. And then you got a lot of coworkers that I've worked with for a lot of years. And I hear their stories, right? Losing their house, losing their stuff, uh, you know, a bunch of, you know, money problems. And it's because of the, the recession, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, we've hit, I've hit, this is my 30th year in, uh, in about two weeks. Congratulations. And, and that's awesome. It goes by fast. I yeah, mean, it, it does. Goes by it really does. Unbelievable how fast it's gone. And, you know, with Martin Brothers, I've actually, um, I've been fortunate, you know, to be with Martin Brothers only because they're at that, that leading edge of innovation, right? Always. And I've always had, I've always been, you know, labeled or, or put on that bridge from, from all the way down from the estimating to the, the PM to our BIM engineering and, and, making it seamless where I got to tie everything together. And early on in, in my career with, um, you know, the concert hall, it was new. And at the later end of my career, you know, it's, it's going hundred miles an hour. Yes. It's, you know, we, we master something in the was scripting in the field with our BIM department and there's new software out, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like yeah. the iPhone. There, there's so much technology, um, and some of these last couple jobs that I've been on, the last two jobs actually I've been on, it's actually, uh, I can see light at the end of the tunnel where we're actually physically taking the model to like a flash drive, putting it into our survey equipment, mm -hmm. and it's shooting the, the layout or tape measure is, is gonna, you know, I'm not gonna say it's 100% eliminated, but for the most part, we're, we're, we're laying out ceilings and walls on these big, um, uh, big projects without even using the tape measure. We're relying on the the, the model mm -hmm. to the actual equipment that's shooting the points. That's amazing. So, uh, and then we were, you know, I'm fortunate to be involved in a little bit with, uh, um, with Oculus, which is the um, augmented reality. Mm -hmm. It's the first time that we've actually applied it on a job, my uh, last job that I did. Um, and it's just, you put these goggles on with the helmet yeah. and, you know, wireframes and you, you turn and we're teaching guys, apprentices, and they're, they're seeing the model with yeah. these glasses and they've never seen it. So it's, it went from gaming to now there's actually a, a, a stud in place. There's a backing and Amazing. they, they put it on and then they know it should be here because you can see it through the glasses where yeah. it needs to be. So learning, uh, teaching the, the younger ones. And it's a hard thing even with, um, you know, I, you know, like <laughs> you can tell I like talking, but. Uh, even the hard, the older guys, the seasoned guys with the new codes, mm -hmm. with, with especially the, the on the exterior side with the, the foam, there's different ways to do it. There's yes. all the rain screen and they look, I'm giving them these rolls of rain screen and people just look at me like, well, what's this kid doing? Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's a learning curve, right? Absolutely. Time's evolved and the efficiency with, you know, the, you know, the, the delineation with the foam, you know, from the hot, cold. Yes. Um, there's just different ways so either you're young or you're old 
you know, season guy, you got to times change, you know. Yeah, and yeah. they're changing a lot faster with all these yeah. energy codes and all oh, yeah. that stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I one of the guests in here has Sean Cooney. Um, he, his episode is coming up, but mm. he has mentioned to like a lot of this technology. It's it's awesome, mm-hmm. and it makes these jobs go up quicker. Mm-hmm. You know, with this technology, but it's taking some of the craftsmanship out of the trade. Yes, yes. You know, so long form. Uh-huh. Is a, a good thing to know. Yeah. To be able, like, it, say the computer goes down, then everybody goes home because Correct. you don't, the lens isn't working today. Yeah. Type of thing. No, so, I mean, that, that's, that's true. We, we, you know, we that, that's something that, that, you know, your IT guys become more important than the craftsman. Right. And, you know, he goes down, you know, we go down. Uh, yes. we, we have, that's, that's a constraint that we have because if we have something goes down, the model's not working. Mm-hmm. Or, or if it's in the model, we're limited. Sure. There's times where the guy goes on vacation. Yeah. And he has the, the correct updated model. Mm-hmm. And if in the guy that comes in and tries to get it, he don't know where it's at. Mm-hmm. What file it is. Is this the updated? Yeah. And it actually it's counterproductive because it's something, especially if it's imperative to the schedule, it sits until he gets back. It gets back. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's something that uh, that's that's the important part of you know the, the modeling, um, you know, and you try to do you know the pre construction you try to do it on the front end, um, but just like any other, it, it, you, there's discovery right. The word in, in in construction now with modeling, it's all we discovered something. You know, we went through, turned the corner, and we discovered there's a radius wall. So you, until you start really in the pre construction phase and try to um, figure out all the ins and outs, mm-hmm. you know, before like the hospitals and, and stuff, the BIM, you do a lot of pre-construction with BIM and you clash detect above ceiling to make sure all your, you know, your full height studs have to go through and it just keeps going further and further, you know, low wall, uh, the exterior, you do, um, some of these jobs with geometry and you, and you try to fit in a, you know, plumbing mm-hmm. is directional it has to go one way. Sure. And if it hits something, so, you know, and the next level is taking it, like I say, to the field. And that's where it's at right now. And there's, I, I know, I, I can feel the problems when what happens if, um, you know, the, the technology isn't available. Sure. Well, it, the thing is, though, is you can still look at a set of plans yourself. Mm-hmm. And you can see that there was a radius wall on the other side of the wall. Correct. I, yeah. I mean, you see it. So yeah. this is helping out. Um, the project managers for the general contractors Mm -hmm. and the project managers that are working for Martin brothers as well, because a lot of those guys didn't work in the field. Correct. So they want to understand that stuff, right? Yep. And that's how they're being able to pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot, and that's, that's really, that's what I actually do is there. We, I get extract um, information from the model and I find some problems and I take it to the generals um, and I do like a presentation, show them some of the constraints that we have mm-hmm. and this is how we're going to solve it. And that information is not available on a 2D drawing. So when we, when we show them this presentation, it, it's, it's their learning, right? Yes. And, 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 and it does help the, the job, but it, it, in the most part, you're having to do more work in the front end of stuff that you would never do. Mm-hmm. And, and it's 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 creating more uh, digital um, work that was never done before. I mean, you, you never you never had that. You never did that. So, at what point? And I've always kind of said this: At what point do we funnel so much money in this front end where it doesn't carry on to the job because you're you're finding all this stuff presentations, mm-hmm. but yet it's not getting the job done earlier. It mm-hmm. comes to the point where ultimately we're going to have craftsmen go out there and physically build the job. Absolutely. So that's you still uh, have to have the bodies out there yeah. to put the stuff up, and those are the guys. That's that's where you're making your money. Yeah. How much are they putting up in the air? Correct. Right. Yeah. They gotta you gotta be able to. And you know, then you go with you know the, you know less and less of the craftsmen. They're trying to eliminate work, eliminate work with a schedule, and and you have the craftsmen that you know. That's another hard thing in the trade right now is you know the season qualified lathers, uh, people that want don't want to do work that's hard and not maybe physically hard it's become more thinking hard mm-hmm. you know how do you how do you do this 
Um, and some people don't just don't want to do this type of work. Some of the, the you know, the harder hospitals, mm-hmm. you know, everything you do, you get questioned. Yeah. And, and those are another, like I said, I've been fortunate to do the hospitals, high rises, and then, you know, some, some of these jobs with geometry and, you know, as you go on the, the trade, the, the square boxes, easy, it's, it, I lose interest. Mm-hmm. So, well, that's boring for you now. <laughs> I get on, some, on, get on some of these jobs and, and like I say, it just stirs the pot a little bit. And, you know, like I say, I'm on the same mode of, you know, stirring up a little bit of passion kicks back in and, mm-hmm. you know, problem shooting, just trying to figure things out and, you know, teaching a team, right. Cause I can't do the job by myself, but sure. I, I, I try to build a, a good team and teach younger guys coming up that this is how you do it. Right. Mm-hmm. You build one, one curve set at a time. You yeah. got it. You got so, it. So when, when you came in, you were a lather. I came in on 42 L with a, as a lather. 42 L. Yeah. Uh, I worked for about uh, two and a half years with Perlite. And then I have the like 27, 26, 27 years with Martin brothers. Um, you know, want you know? I wish I would have taken more time off, but I, I mean, it was a consistent, consistent hours. I, I rarely took in my first part of my 15, 20 years. I rarely took vacations. A lot of little, small little things, but mm-hmm. never big. I was always, you know, tied. In, I was passionate about the job. Yes. You know, being involved with some of the, you know, it seems like you you learn so much. You know, something that we've never dealt with recently. The younger generation is. I remember back in. 2000 it was 2000 like the, the concert hall ended um but we had that metal shortage mm-hmm. and that yep. was another one that tied into schedule where there was you had to pre-order material like three months in advance because the metal there were no coils yes and that was something that i learned and the only way to you learn how to do it is just you got to order three months ahead yes it's harder yeah. when things aren't designed you don't have uh some middles approved there's just so many things mm-hmm. you know and and from when I first started to now, everything's about protecting yourself. You know, um, you know the generals, just making sure you have, cross your T's, dot your I's, don't order nothing, make sure it's, you know, the specs, everything's to the T, because mm-hmm. a lot of times it'll come back. And that's, that's the hardest part of teaching, sharing the knowledge to the younger people that this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. You don't order it unless it's approved, because once you put it up, you know, it can come right, but you'll be, we don't have, we have money to put it up, we don't have money to tear it tear it down and put exactly. it back up again. Yeah. You never did. Yeah. It, it, it's never been that yeah. way. So yeah, it's just times of change. I mean, everything from, uh, you know, when we, you know, we're working on the game box from the pagers, that's, I tell some stories and I'm, I feel so outdated. Uh, you know, we go when someone was, you know, when I was first came in, I was probably three years in the trade, you know, some one of my coworkers, you know, was having a baby. You got a pager mm-hmm. from our office. The office said, call, what's his name? She went into labor, his mm-hmm. wife, and I had to go there. And people look at me like, what are you talking about? I go, well, no, I tell them there was a pay phone by the general's <laughs> office. So you always used to have change. Yeah. And they're all, they're looking at me like, no, that's how it was. I mean, yeah. that's, yeah, that's, that's amazing. We, when I was in, we didn't have pagers. We had walkie talkies. <laughs> walkie ta- yeah. Yeah. Walkie talkies. I mean, that's, that's um, what it was. There, there were no pagers, Yeah, you know, back when, when I started. So yeah, it's, it's come along. Yeah. It's come a long way. I mean, come a long and, way. you know, safety is another one that's huge. Uh, you know, that's always, you know, it's for the better. Um, you know, we're always like, we're brought up production, but you get these, you know, some of the contractors are really, you know, stern on some of their safety practices. Which is all for the better because, I mean, ultimately we, we do come here for our, our family and we don't need a lost eyeball, um, you know, hearing another mm-hmm. one. When I, yeah. You know, it's, you know, the welding, everything is for the better. You know, welding, don't look at it. You get your flash burn. Mm-hmm. And now there's, you know, you know, there's like secondhand flash burn where you're looking on the side. Now there's like shields. Everything's protecting the, the worker, the craftsman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, things evolve. You just... You know, water. We've got to supply the water. Yep, yep. <laughs> so I'm thinking back. I uh-huh. get yelled at. Yeah. And now, you know, I'm supplying, yeah. you know, the water. So. Yeah, you guys are buying like pallets of that pa- shit, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Semis. Yeah, semis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you do the math and you have, um, when you have 100 workers mm-hmm. and, you know, the amount of water that's required per day. Yeah. You're, you're, you're ordering a, 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 you know, a semi will be, you know, that you'll use it up in a week. Sure. Easily. So. That's amazing. Um, but, you know, it's. You know, I had my share with, you know, hot areas, you know, in the mm-hmm. desert working and stuff. So 
It's, it's for the better. Well, you we, brought your own water, right? <laughs> yeah, I bring my own water. <laughs> I never asked that question again in there. But you know, they, they're thinking back now. I mean, everything was you don't know you don't know then. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of the you know, younger apprentices, when you yell at them or you tell them, you think you're yelling at them, but you're you're teaching them. Yes. You know, you you set up the saw where you limit. You, you try to teach them limit the steps where, you know, bending down or yeah. you know turning the saw, put the saw up, just. A lot of the little things, and some some will take it like it's bad, but mm-hmm. you're really, you're actually teaching them. Mm-hmm. And some people take it wrong, but you're just, you know, I was yelled at, yes, to do it, and I learned. You were cussed out. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was cussed out. I mean, there was days where I just shook my head, and you know, I think that's one of the first couple beers I ever had was, you know, thinking of who's yelling at me, and mm-hmm. and just like, man, I don't know if I want to do this, and. You know, I just go back to, you know, some of the teachings, you know, that Tim, you know, kind of taught me and stuff. So, yeah, yeah. But it builds character. It, oh, yeah. It really Definitely. does. And it, uh, they were um, it, like uh, the guys that were in before us mm-hmm. when we started were a lot tougher than we oh, were. Oh, yeah. You know, we were a yeah. bunch of pussies <laughs> compared to what those yeah. guys had to go yeah. through. I mean, they didn't even have a gumper out on the yeah. job, they were pissing in the sand pile. Oh, oh you yeah. Know? And yeah, it, it was, it, it, you know. There's just story. I have stories, and and I I'm part of stories. I mean, just a matter mm-hmm. of you know they were they were just it was rough. People, yeah. mm-hmm. there's things that happened. I man, it was they were they were so mean. But there's things that I've learned to this day. I, I do you know just you know you get to work early. You know it's yeah. kind of like the old you know some of the, the some of the great football coaches with the shula and the wooden. Uh, you know you get to work early. You get to practice early. That I, that was preached that mm-hmm. meaning you should he- be here before me, you know, and yeah. you should be here. You should be ready, rolled out, everything. Mm-hmm. Now, while I'm taught, you know, we got to do this and we got to wait a minute. There's so many rules now. Yes, and it's just like we're not telling you to work. We're just telling you build build good practices mm-hmm. for that when we're ready to work. Mm-hmm. We give that on it. That whole key is just, just give me that honest eight hours, mm-hmm. and then I'm, I'm not asking for no more. Our our company has the the character where. Just give us that. I mean, a lot of people want to, you know, do different things. And, and because we're ro- opening the game box early and drinking coffee, mm-hmm. that's what we do. Yeah. You, you talk, you know, most thing you, usually, you know, the guys will talk about. It's actually a good thing when you talk and hear what happened. The best thing I remember on being out there in the field with all the guys is, uh, is the, the feedback from the weekend of what everybody did. Yeah. And you do that half hour early over coffee, telling the stories, what we did over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kids, the sports, those are just things and it gets you going. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what I, that's what you, you live for. I mean, that's what you do. And then you get to do your, your craft and yes. have fun and do your work. Are you really getting eight hours out of the guys? Well, <laughs> it's like six now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's six for eight. Yeah. They, by the time you add everything up and there, there's so many rules with, uh, uh, there, there's, you know, it's compounded by a lot of things, right? A lot of the jobs have like a stretch and flex. Yeah. So it's and physical education before physical education and which is fine, which we you know we, our estimators are good. We, it's all tied in, but it's the indirect costs, right? So yeah. they want everybody down at the bottom, mm-hmm. but we're on the sixth and eighth floor. We got to wait for the man lift that only holds 10 people, mm-hmm. but I have 60 people that I got to get to the roof. Right. So, so, you know, we, we try to accommodate and say, can we have it like up on the roof and stuff? And they want everyone together. So some of the things were tied contractually to the general. Yeah. Um, you know, the brakes are, are, are one, especially if you have to drive off site. A lot of jobs in downtown, you're, you're you know, you're getting shuttled in. Mm-hmm. And then uh, by the time you roll out and stuff. So that's the hard part. I mean, it's always been that's always been like that. Yes. That my second part of my career. Yeah. First part, I mean, you, it was that it was that eight hours. I mean, it was it was different rules. It was Friday. It was like an extra 10 minutes. We worked hard and, you know, it was a lot more, you know, a lot more rela- relaxing because we did work a lot harder. Mm-hmm. Um, but they knew you worked harder. So, so they were a little more forgiving. Nowadays, if you, you know, you cut a break or something, I mean, I have once a week, I have to have the entire crew. If it's 100 people, they have to sign a break check to confirm an initial that they took their breaks. Uh, Is that weekly. right? Yeah. So, and, and, uh, everything having to do with, you know, with the forklift, we just, so much paperwork is involved. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have people in charge of people in charge of two people deep 
in case you have to go on vacation, you got to have a backup mm -hmm. to get that form, to get the pre tax There's pre tasks on certain contractors required. There's, there's just so much paperwork involved mm -hmm. in, in the, in the job. And, you know, that's different from, you know, the game box with a set of plans yeah. in it. Um, so when, when are they going to start setting showers up for after the physical education? So you can get rinsed yeah. off before you start working yeah. and stuff, make sure you're yeah. not too sweaty and, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, that'll be the next thing. No, yeah. I mean, you know, you know they have, you know, they have a lot, a lot actually a lot of the, the contractors now are doing it. I mean, they're, they're doing it and you get a lot of the, you got the, the older, older guys and it's nothing for them to have a, a cigarette and a donut while they're stretching. Right. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's like a triple whammy there. Yeah. But um but yeah, there's it's 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 different from when we, we started. But absolutely. Like we say, everything, you know, evolves and we gotta, you know, change change our ways. So if Well not, you you either do or you're out, right? Correct. You're you're not gonna be able to bid on that type of work. Yeah. And that that's that's where that's where it went. And Martin Brothers has always done that huge work mm -hmm. and they've had to embrace these new mm -hmm. standards that Correct. these general contractors are putting out there. And, um, you know, a couple of guys have been in here, you know, you worked on these jobs, you know, they had a little trailer mm -hmm. down there for this million square foot of, uh, mm -hmm. the project was a million square feet. Mm -hmm. And there were two guys, the main superintendent, had worked in the field for a number of years to get into that position. He understood sequencing and mm -hmm. how stuff got put together. These jobs got built, you know, and, yeah. um, yeah. things when, when education came into it, it changed, changed yeah. a lot. No, definitely. You know? they, some of these bigger projects, I mean, I, I you know, that's one thing in the Mark brothers, you, you, we used to, you know, it's the PM general foreman. It was Jack of all, you did it all. Yes. And if you had a, you know, the, the Lather guy that was, jack of all with all the other stuff that you do it was a one person deal now the way it's evolved is you get all this paperwork you get the, the bim files you get this meeting the meetings will tear you down i mean there's so many meetings now for different trades you, you used to need another person yeah that's where it's an you know an active pm mm -hmm. you know there's a there's a there's so many new positions there's, there's an active qc guy there's an active safety guy there's there's so many our our, our tree chart you need to plot it out, right? You can't mm -hmm. usually like our chart or um, organizational chart fit on a eight and a half by 11. Now you need to plot it out. There's so many people. Do you guys have a paperclip department out on a <laughs> yeah. job? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, there's so many people, there's a lead, lead or, you know, lead for, um, you know, for takes care of our lead. There, there's so many BIM, BIM department, engineering department, mm -hmm. computational and our bar chart, there, it just keeps going. Yes. We can't even see when it ends. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it's, um, it's just, well, that's got to drive the cost of these jobs up a lot, man. Yeah. You know, the having, having those extra people yeah. out there to be in compliance with what the general contractor wants, because right. that was in the contract. Yep. Right. Yeah. They'll always, they always come back. They'll, they'll always, always go back to page 53. Yep. Right. And, yep. and, um, mm -hmm. you, you have to play that game because yeah. you signed the papers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, those are all, it's all ex like we say, it's all an experience thing. The pers person out of college going into this PM position on some of these bigger projects, you'll get eaten up alive because you got to, you know, you got to be able to, you know, your, your mindset is to pre protect our owner's money. Right. Sure. And <laughs> if you don't protect it, these will, they'll eat you up mm -hmm. and you know, they'll, you got to be smart about it. You know, sure. they'll, they'll, all, they'll always come back the famous saying, well, how did you figure it? And mm -hmm. you got to be able to explain and tell a story. There's no us. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. got to be documented, yeah. they, they, you know, to put that down. Yeah, it's yeah. all documentation and, and, you know, the emails and just make sure you have this before that. Don't do nothing before you get authorized because, and it's kind of, I don't know if they practice this in construction management, but the minute that somebody says, go ahead and do this, I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with an email with showing you next thing you know, the guy's gone. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it seems like they're, they always, certain people leave a certain mm -hmm. time. And yep. There's, you know, you ain't going to be able to tell that story from a year from now when you got to ask for the money. Exactly. So. He doesn't work for us anymore. Yeah. Right. He's, what, he, what are you talking about? Nobody he, knows. He left eight months ago. So yeah. his signature doesn't mean anything. Correct. Yeah, so, and that's so. part of like the, the position that you got to protect, protect yourself. Though. You know, one, and if you're, if you can't read it and understand it, take a picture to tell a story. Sure. And, you know, from a year from now or two years, I, I've done that on several projects where, you know, I got my owner, owner's ship side and you got the contractor and 
those pictures are golden, you know, a year from now when we're trying to collect that money. Yeah. If well, you don't have the backup, you will get, you know, the cents on the dollar. Mm-hmm. If you have backup and you to tell a story, you know, and, and you know, with age, the memory go, starts going too. Yeah. That's yeah. one thing I, uh, you know, yeah. memory, a little bit of memory and, um, you know, a little bit of eyesight. Those are the two things that are yeah. affecting yeah. me. Well, now you remember, we used to write stuff down. Now you take a picture of it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It, it yeah. works good. Yeah. It Time works good. It's right. It's right there. Yeah. You're on a massive project right now. Correct. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, it's, 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 it's the Lucas job. It's, uh, it's the high end. It's the, um, it's, it's technology, it's innovation. It's the whole, it's exactly where, or the industry where it's going. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm kind of, um, it, it stir me up a little bit with my, with my passion because it has a lot of stuff that's never been done before. And we're actually in pre-construction phase, you know, working out all the details and basically it's a job with geometry. So yeah. there's pictures online that you can see, but it's, it's challenging. There's a lot of, uh, stuff that's right up my alley and we don't have it all worked out, but we're on a good path, uh, through design development and, you know, making sure that, you know, we're adhering to the schedule. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind of where the, the two and two don't go hand in hand, you know, the harder geometry jobs and you put a schedule to it. That's kind of, you know, one of the, if I had one thing, in construction that that I, I don't like is is when you tie the tune together the, the schedule mm-hmm. because it becomes like not fun right? right so I work as hard as I could you know to, to make that schedule and stuff but it, it, it takes a toll and yes. and when it takes a toll like on your family your kids and and it changes your lifestyle and you're, you're sleeping wrong something's wrong yes. right so you know there, there's a compromise where you know I have the experience to handle it and I want to be able to, to share with some of the, you know, the craft men, some of the younger apprentices and stuff. This is how you do this job. Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, there's not one straight wall on that project. No, is there? Nope. There's not one stud that's identical to another. So if you had to get, cut all the studs, you wouldn't find one piece of stud that's the same dimension, size, uh, length or, or cut. So amazing. It's, a uh, it's amazing. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, like, I've, I, I think it's taking a little, little toll, but I, I do know that the, it's taking a toll. And I think, um, I don't know, since this is a 30 years and I have two more kids left in college that I'll be working on, but maybe want to think I'm going to a little different route. Just, are, you, are you the main jefe out there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You are the man. Yeah. You wearing the golden hard hat out there? <laughs> yeah. I have, wow. I have a good team behind me. That's, I have, yeah. I definitely have a, a we probably have a team of, if I had to guess, 20 people right now on our team working probably for a year on all this pre-construction. And there's not one piece of track shot down? No. Yeah, we don't. We won't have a... Yeah, we'll be going pre-construction with 20 deep for a year. Is that easily right? Wow. Before the sticker, first clips. Is the, uh, is the superstructure going up? Uh, with the superstructure is going to be... It's a, the full production is going to start in August. Mm-hmm. Still, so they're digging out there and yeah. they're oh, yeah. they already and stuff. They already poured up to ground level and uh-huh. they'll be going full steam ahead. Um, but yeah, so there's uh, there's a lot I want to share, and, and I think this job is, um, you know, I think I'm going to go a little different route after this job. Just, yeah, yeah, I, I, I want to be able, um, you know, through my my career, I did a lot of like coaching, you know, my, my kids. Mm-hmm. And I shared a lot of um, good examples to the kids. Mm-hmm. And I think my last hurrah, I think the last couple of years, I want to be able to share my wealth with some of these younger kids and, and teach teaching them what I know mm-hmm. and what got me th- through my success of raising raising my kids, putting them through college, and, and not so much talking about a job, but actually more of a career and teaching them like the traits of the, the, the tricks of the trade, yeah, the, the little stuff that no one teaches you. Like I say, there's no, there's no, no, there's no book no. on learning no. some of this stuff. How to, you know, you talk about like snapping a, a line. There, there's who, there's, there's a line. There's clearing the line. There's getting the chalk off where it doesn't splatter. Yeah. There's all these little things. Yes. That it's not in a book. You know the. Right. You know the. You have you have to be doing it. You have, you have to, to be, be doing it. Hey, dude, you've already started, man. This is what part of this podcast yeah. is all about. You to go. you know these young kids 
they want to watch podcasts. Yeah. And, and yeah. they dial into this stuff. A lot of the older guys, they, they don't, they don't know about it, but the younger guys, yeah. this is, this is the type of stuff that they dial in on and they need, I'm hoping that this will educate <clears throat> some of them, you know, mm -hmm. that, that tune into this and maybe at the gang box when they're having their donut and a cup of coffee on, on Monday morning, maybe they'll talk about the podcast or, yeah. or who was on it. Cause I'm, yeah. I'm getting guys, uh -huh. you know, I'm getting some older guys on here. Um, I, I'm going to get, you know, younger journeymen on there. I, I, I want the experience, mm -hmm. you know, the guys, you have to have the years behind you to, to have the experience. And realistically, you're not really a journeyman until you have 10 years in, Correct. you know, three, four years, you're, you're not still learning. You're mm -hmm. still learning. So if you get into a situation where, uh, it's almost impossible to make this happen, if you have 10 years in, you can build it and make it look good. Correct. It may not be done fast, but it'll be done right, and it will look good when it's done. Yeah. And you can't do that in four years. No, years. There's so many things you come across, and and, and there's that's the learning experience. Like the, the I do believe that the unions, they're teaching them good stuff. Um, but you you get, you don't get the practical till you're out on the film. It's just like uh, you said with the chalk line. You know the little the you little gotta things. Clear, you got to clear it before you yeah. snap it, right? Yeah. You know, you know, those are always the, you know, the pulling tight and you, yeah. the first time you, you almost rip his finger off yeah. because you don't want to lose line and he'll pull it tight every single time. Yes. He'll learn it one time. Mm -hmm. And where does that teach you that, you know, hurt yeah. the apprentice, his finger to yeah. make sure it's a tight line. Well, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Right. So exactly. And that, that's, uh, something very basic and some mm -hmm. don't drag the bloody chalk line on the yeah. ground, man. You know, you're, oh. you're, you're marking it up. Yeah. I mean, the plum bob, I mean, the plum bombs, I mean, they're non-existent. I mean, yeah. Unbelievable how much the technology, but there was, you know, there, and that, I see, I see that commonly. I mean, they stop and they'll come back to a wall because they didn't have a, a PLS mm -hmm. in the olden days. You just, you better pull out your bob and finish that. Don't exactly. leave any a loose end. Exactly. So, exactly. You know, you know, that's uh that's like, that's a perfect example of turning it into a patch job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I didn't. And the craftsmanship, right? Mm -hmm. So the technology kind of takes a little bit of that away. away. So, you know, have a plumb bob somewhere. So if yeah. you can finish that up, get it done and yeah. get out of that area so we can yeah. move to the next area and, and get it done. Yeah. So some of these larger products, I mean, that's a good point. Some of these larger product um, projects, you teach your, your lead guys, you teach those and you, those, those on a job, the loose end, it, that that's what kills you. Yes. You cannot have loose ends. No. And you teach that to your lead guys and they learn, right? Mm -hmm. So then, you know, t you know, teach the teacher yeah. and you go tell your guys. Yeah. It's a ripple effect, but Absolutely. we can't have, you know, anytime you, you come up to a, a curtain wall system, all the studs in there, don't leave one stud missing because no. where's the stud going to come from? Exactly. You know, think pre think you already had all your crap think there the to do steps. it. Yeah. Yeah. So th those are little things where you, you teach and, those are some of the fun jobs teaching the the younger guys mm -hmm. because when you go to like the next project, they know already. Yes. And you know, they come you yeah. know, full circle. Well, it, it's good for our industry to teach those apprentices because eventually mm -hmm. we're going to be gone Yeah, and they're going to be in there and they're going to, you know, just, it, it, it's a, it's a natural progression yeah. to where they need to be taught to, to learn this stuff. And the other thing is too, like we're talking about a patch job. So, these uh, GCs that are out on these projects running these jobs, they have these PMs, they have schedules, they have charts and so forth. Mm -hmm. And they want you to get into these areas because we can change our industry can change the color of the building pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So he's telling you, Hey, I need you to start in this area. Well, you need this, you need this. Where's the curbs? You know, mm -hmm. uh, don't worry about it. Get no, yeah. We we need this stuff before we start. Otherwise, yeah. it turns into a patch job, and we're going to either work right to left or left to right. Yeah. We're going to go around this building, and we're not going to start jumping all over the place because we didn't bid it that way. Correct. You know, and that's where uh, everybody's on the same team, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're putting the stuff up correctly, he's getting his draws from the owner. He's paying you. It's, it's pretty simple stuff. Yeah. No, it's, it's a sequence. That's, and I think that's, you know, hand in hand with the schedule and the sequence and procurement of some stuff, you know, different mm -hmm. trades have a longer procurement and you know, it, it doesn't work all the time. So, no. so what's the plan? Yeah. And more and more, you know, the, like I say, these contractors there, you know, they need help and 
where they get the help from are the people that have the experience. Absolutely. Telling them the sequence, this has to happen. Yes. Flashing goes on before laugh. And, uh, oh, we forgot about that guy. Yeah. Well, he's he's step one. Yeah, <laughs> you exactly. Know, so, so yeah. and, and, you know, there's, there's, you know, they're always looking for, you know, and a lot of, a lot of things that we've have that we've been doing these last, you know, decade or so is, is the prefabrication. You mm-hmm. know, that's a big thing when it helps the schedule and, you know, everything having to do with, you know, fast, 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 but you can't go so fast in, in prefabricating things where, you know, you build things, especially on the exteriors where you create a, a, a leak zone mm-hmm. or you create a, a bad joint or something. So it comes, you know, there's a fine line of how far you can take prefabrication. Yeah. Um, you know, without making another problem. Sure. So those are always, uh, and, and my whole background is, you know, being a lather was, we were always brought up with that, that lath mentality, uh-huh. uh, kind of broken in the jack of all, all the, the stuff from the, from not just framer or a lather. It's, it's the actual layout snapping lines to the track, to the studs, to the, to the lath, mm-hmm. all the way out from pouring concrete to, you know, the punch list at the very end. Yeah. A specialist in everything. Yeah. Master, master of all, or jack of all, master of none. You yeah, just get well, the exactly. Done. But the thing is, is it was, you weren't just specialized in, in Correct. one area. You know, a lot Correct. of times the older guys were, yeah. you'd put them on trim because you didn't want them hanging board and, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. They, they couldn't, they couldn't put up as much as a young guy can, but yeah. You use that knowledge yeah. because they're going to make stuff look good when yeah, it's yeah. all when it's all. Yeah, done. A, lot, a lot of the tradesmen here. I mean, the guys that know everything. There's guys that are specialized here, but oh, yeah. the guys that know everything, they're more useful because you can put them on anything. Exactly. And work longer. I was actually had experience out in Frisco. Um, we're up there doing some prefabrication uh, for this job, and I was had a meeting with their union guys up there, and they are solely specialized. I mean, they have board hangers only. Mm-hmm. They have framing they even they narrow it down to like soffit guys they're broken down to the t of what they do and that's all they do mm-hmm. that's and, boring yeah it's, it's repetition yeah you know it, it is is boring yeah i mean so, that's what was cool about laughing yeah you know back even when yeah. you came up you did a lot of different oh, yeah. stuff you yeah know. so the, the you know the younger guys they should be fortunate on that they're not just going to be you know used everybody has the opportunity going in mm-hmm. you just got to make the, the best of your time and and learn from everybody and hopefully, you know, be as fortunate as I did and, you know, have some good teachers and Mm -hmm. don't be afraid to accept some of the criticism because they're teaching you. Any criticism is something that you, you you know, you're doing wrong or they want you to do better. Yeah. And it's, it's learning. So I I think translating all that into, um, I mean, I'm sure the carpenters, the, the union stuff, when they go to school, they they teach you that, but it's, it's the the old school guys that taught us. Mm -hmm. That's where we learn from. Exactly. Exactly. So when this thing gets all fired up, this museum, mm-hmm. uh, how many guys do you think you're going to end up having out on that project? We'll, pro- we'll probably have, um, you know, just like any other job where uh, we just have the, the facade and we're, you know, the, the, way, the way the uniqueness of this building goes up it does take some time for this the still to go up. Mm-hmm. And just like anything else, we'll be chasing the concrete, fireproofing. So it is in little sections. So it's not like we're doing the entire building. Mm-hmm. We're actually billboarding it from uh, one direction. So I think we peak out like at about a hundred guys. Mm-hmm. So, and a lot of um, a lot of the stuff we're going to be doing is uh, prefabrication offsite. Mm. So we'll have a lot of labor hours offsite, mm-hmm. building a lot of these uh, components and then taking it to the job site and just installing them. Got it. So got it, and it, it'll be. Uh you know, the steel's always off. Yeah. So yeah. you have some adjustment room. There, there's, the there's c- constraints. So there's, you know, that's the thing with, with our trade is that you, you're always with the rough iron that has tolerance. Mm-hmm. And as you go out to the finish, you know, we have to make up the difference. Yes. So that, that's a job on a, a, every job. Yeah. And you got to be creative of, you know, how can you fix the problem for that? It doesn't cost the client owner, the, the client money. Mm-hmm. How can we help the GC? Because something was off from another trade, no back charges. And they will always come to us to resolve the, the, the issue. And a lot of times, you know, that's kind of where you get, you know, the reputation of, you know, problem shooters. You know, Martin Brothers is good because they they helped us. They solved the issue. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's usually because of, you know, you know so there was a mistake or something. And how do we make this go away without a cost to nobody? Um, so that's that's right up my alley, solving solving problems. Yeah. Yeah, you are the problem solver. You you've been uh, again these uh 
you saw mm-hmm. this technology coming into mm-hmm. the industry back mm-hmm. when you did the Disney concert hall. Mm-hmm. And, um, Correct. you've actually had a super open mind yeah. of Mark brothers as a whole, you yeah. know, they're a super progressive company yeah. and they always have been about, mm-hmm. you guys do difficult work. Um, yeah. you do a lot of stair shafts and shitters, mm-hmm. you know, your core work and stuff, yeah. but that's, kind of they're not building like a lot of office buildings anymore mm. like they used to back in the 80s and stuff correct. like that where you know you you'd want to get that ti work right correct yeah you know so we, so we you, share we share we have, we have the share of the, the ti work we do the it's it's global everywhere we, we take on some of these jobs hospital or a little bit in hospitals mm-hmm. which are a little different beasts but you know the the best i think some of the good you know teaching wise you know we i did that hospital in riverside community hospital and there was some there was some, like I say, we learned. So in the middle, maybe it was like a decade ago, 10 years ago, there were some pieces that I needed. And I think I, I came to you and you can bend them and you can paint them. And you, I think you even said that you powder coated them. Mm-hmm. And it's like you solved like four issues in one shot. So at the end result, I take it to a, just about a month ago, there was another guy that was doing similar situation where we needed some pieces. And he was going like a chicken with his head cut off. And I showed him this, this company will do this, paint it, um, powder coat it, turnkey and cut it. And he was, eyes just like lit up, but that's the experience thing, teaching Mm -hmm. someone and he carries it on. Sure. So, you know, without that knowledge for these people, who knows what would happen? It wouldn't cost money. Exactly. Exactly. On on this um, museum is, is it all metal panel? It's all um, um, FRP, FRP, fiberglass, fiberglass mm-hmm. uh, molded panels. Are you guys going to hang those? Yes, we're, we're installing them. Wow. So wow, and that's all continuous insulation behind that. It, it's gonna. It's a metal fo- uh, stud. It's metal stud uh, truss system mm-hmm. that we we design. Right. And we're it's attached to the FRP, and we install uh, the facade. Got it. But so are they, are they doing any, uh, poly ISO insulation out there behind the facade? Yes. We're, we- no, that goes on f- first mm-hmm. and then we, we install, uh, we get the, uh, we get the building weather tight and then we install our, the facade. Mm-hmm couple layers of walls there huh yeah yeah a couple yeah. layers yeah so it, it is fast paced it, it's a fun um it, it's challenging it's just, i mean i, I want to call you know the, the the you know the lucas project it's it's geometry as as, as a whole like the industry mm-hmm. as you know it, it's a it's a hard job it's it's difficult and you tie a schedule into it mm-hmm. that's where um that's where this industry is going mm-hmm. you know how can you prefabricate well how can you get how can we turn this over the building over quicker Mm-hmm. faster yeah you know when when it ties into like a museum they, they want to open you know for, for the for the public it's a hospital they want the revenue they want the, 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 the turnover patients. the patients yeah. yeah so there's different reasons of, of why it's just a matter of schedule drives these jobs and, and it's it's becomes a little bit difficult when you get into some unique conditions with geometry do you think that that this museum is going to be more difficult than the concert hall because there's not one straight wall on that thing either. Yeah. Um, Those ceilings I, you built yeah. in there were just unbelievable. Yeah. I think the, the, the concert hall was unique only because it, it was, it's never been done to that caliber. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was a learning, it was a learning curve for all of us. So I think, I do think that the, the technology has caught up and um, there, there's more, there's more tools for layout. There's more, um, scripting that's done and there's more technology that helps us build the building before you know we even step foot on the job sure and by the time we get to the job i mean it's basically going to become an erector set Mm -hmm. when we go out there as in the concert hall it was more of a uh, the geometry was was still created with technology but for the most part everything was stick frame Mm -hmm. with the craftsman Mm -hmm. as in here everything's going to be pre-assembled Rector set it and it's just going to be a, like an install. A goes to A, B goes to B, C yep. goes to C. Correct. And so hopefully it fits. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. Yeah. That's uh, that challenging. Very yeah. challenging. You've yeah. always had challenging jobs. That's that's what they yeah. put you on, man. Yeah. You're a smart but guy. I, it's, it's taking its toll. I get a little gray hair coming on the sides and 
No, you're and, d- you've done well. You've done well. You're, 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 you're using some good hair so. dye there, bro. <laughs> it's coming in. You get the so. And uh, you have one son in the trade. I, I have one son in the trade. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like 28. He's at the he's at the um the stadium Ram Stadium right now for mm-hmm. Martin Brothers. Mm-hmm. So he's uh. Is he a carpenter? Yes, he was. He's a carpenter. He got mm-hmm. in later. It, is he a journeyman? Yes, he's a journeyman. Yeah. Good. Good. So he's uh. It's good. interesting. I never, I never had that. Uh, it's actually a really good feeling. Him coming and asking me questions. Mm-hmm. You know, a little and it really asking me like tricks of the trade. You know, some of the, it's a difficult. The, the Ram Stadium is it's unique because it's not like the, the stadiums that are going up like in uh, Vegas where it's square. This is actually has a lot of stuff going on. It's a nice stadium that mm-hmm. it, you know the, the exterior it's, it's monolithic that goes to the inside podiums. They're called the pill soffits, and they're they're. It, there's a lot of stuff going on there, but mm-hmm. it's a good feeling him asking me a couple little pointers on some, some things. What would mm-hmm. you do? Mm-hmm. Cause I know he's getting information that, um, you know, there's, there's every job there's, there's problems. How do you, what do you do here? What do you do, do there? And, you know, I, you know, I, I kind of, it's a little good feeling. It's the first time that there's no book to, to parenting either. Right. So when you no. get this, yeah. when you get questions asked of asking me of what I've done in the, my past history, mm-hmm. it's good to, you know, give that, you know, teaching or, or what I would do, mm-hmm. I would, you know, use your, like you're lining out someone. Mm-hmm. And like I said, and I, 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 I teach them, you know, my, my way may not be the perfect way, but it's what, how you start. Yeah. And, and next time you're going to learn something else that it didn't. And every time you do something, it may not work on every job. Exactly. It, it's different. Every job is different. Exactly. So, exactly. Have you been out to that job? Yeah. I've been out there a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I uh, surveyed some of the, um, the technology we have some new laser lines that that they've used out there that I'm going to be implementing on uh, some of my you know future jobs. Mm-hmm. So good for you. So good for you. It, it, yeah. Not afraid to learn with. It. Uh, I had my doubts on some of the equipment they had, mm-hmm. and it proved me wrong. So mm-hmm. that goes to show that, you know don't be afraid to learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had reservations on the equipment that was out there, and I was proved wrong. So I, I'm. I evolved. I'm going to be using some of that equipment. Well, now you're an old timer. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, I, it happened when we go to these interviews, just these last couple of years, I, you know, next thing you know, I'm, I became the old guy like overnight yeah. and everybody's introducing themselves. And here I am, you know, Martin Brothers, 27 years and, yeah. and I'm like 27 years and it just went right. by fast. It did. I mean, it's unbelievable how, how fast it went. Yeah. You know, you've had a hell of a career over yeah. there. Yeah. You really have. They're, yeah. they're, uh, very fortunate to have you yeah. and you're fortunate to have them yeah, because they they have a Correct. excellent reputation in the industry. Correct. Great company. Yeah. Really great people that working over there, smart people, Correct. great field guys. Um, yeah. they take pride in what they do and yeah. that's one of the reasons why they get these big jobs. Yeah. No, that's, that's, I agree. Fortunate just with the tech, you know, the innovation that mm-hmm. on the front end. And they embrace that yeah. too. Oh yeah. Everybody so. in there. Everybody so, in there. And that's one, one thing we go in with all these projects, you know, it's, it's the clients we, we want to give, we want to come back. Mm-hmm. We want to, you know, give you a good product and, and help you out, you know, finishing this project on time. Yeah. So that's the mentality. And, and, you know, we have, you know, the, our owners, you know, from our, the Martins and then from, you know, our newer, you know, management owners, everyone is just full circle mm-hmm. helpful and, and, and they embrace and they allow us to, to do our work. So I've been fortunate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if there's an example of, you know, coming from high school to, to a success, you know, a success of raising, you know, six kids, putting them to college, this is one. It's just a matter of just listen and, and, you know, get that experience and don't be afraid to ask questions. Mm-hmm. You know, the experience is what, uh, you know, the trade and the, the tradesman. And, you know, you always think, how can you get all the apprentices and on the same page? It just takes time. One yes. job at a time, one wall at a time, mm-hmm. no matter how big the job is, just build your team and, and, you know, just work at it. Well, one of the things is too, that you got into your position is you were always looking ahead, mm-hmm. you know, right. and you have to do that when you're running jobs. Mm-hmm. You, you don't, you don't, you have to be 10 steps ahead of the game Yes, because your guys can put up a lot of bad work yeah. in a day, yep. you know, it, it, and if it's wrong, you're losing your butt on it. Yeah. And, um, you, you've always been a, yeah. a great planner and, yeah. Cause you're looking ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. When you, when you, when you get them to the hundred people, you, that's some, you just figure it's semis of material that are delivered like daily. Yes. Right. So mm-hmm. by the time you do a math of like board hanging and stuff, 
I mean, you're you're thinking you're you're a week, you're two weeks ahead mm-hmm. of the stuff coming in and ordering. Yeah, because now is too late. Exactly. Right. Later in the week is too late. Exactly. I mean, you're you're there's so much to came with with ordering, getting the material. Some of the board comes from like Sun City. It, it's a it, it, it takes time, you know. And sure. There can't be, you know, there's gonna be emergencies, but a lot of you know our, our the yards, you know, a lot of our distributors, everybody has an emergency. Right. Up, er, so, it, yeah. Every day. There's yeah. no emergency. Yeah. Just pre-plan, and there is no emergency. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So pre-planning yeah. is is real important to you know some of these bigger jobs. Sure. So how do you guys are you gonna have like logistic problems out there on the museum? Or is it uh, pretty, we're is we're, it we're currently dealing with all, all of our logistics uh, areas, lifting, hoisting, um, trucking, mm-hmm. um, all all of that uh, um, right now. Um, procurement of the material, the the logistics, and a lot of these jobs, like you know, the these different areas, right? So you go downtown, it's always logistics problem because of just room. There's no the mm-hmm. there's no lay down area. Sure. Um, when you get into some of these areas, like I did a, a museum, an Academy Museum Motion Pictures. Wilshire district, there was no, there's no area to land in everything. And it was a spear and there was one opening when the material went in. Mm. So just envision uh, 40 semis of material that has to go through one hole and you can't stock during the day. So it's wow. like, it became a constraint where you got to be creative. Mm-hmm. You have a set, you have a different crew. You have a mm-hmm. before, after crew, you got to just be creative how to get all this material in there. So logistic plays on any job plays a, a key high rises you know there's mm-hmm. it's slow stocking you get yeah. so many sheets of that freight a day and long material you can't get up so mm-hmm. there's logistics on any job sure like every job is different yep uh this is, this is a key yeah uh to getting materials you know especially if there's you can't get the material um up stocked or availability of the material mm-hmm. you know the that all ties into the logistics absolutely absolutely so, yeah you man you have one hell of a story man <laughs> I, yeah. I could probably keep you in here for uh, three hours. Yeah. I, I think, I think, I think the biggest thing is, is, you know, keeping things in perspective where, you know, you have your family and your, you know, what you do, you gotta, you know, make sure that you, you know, keep everything in perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, you yeah. Know, our, and some of the things I cut, I don't even know how I do some of the stuff like our, like I say, our little fishing trip that we went on. That's actually this uh, July 13th is our 25th annual. Is that right? Yeah. So we have a, Father to son uh, fishing trip, Bishop, that we go to. Probably got some grand grandkids. In no, I don't have now. no grandkids. No? That, no, no grandkids. Any of, any of the guys Gordon going? Gordon has a nice little, he has the three generations. So he has his mm-hmm. son that's in the trade, and he has his little, his grandson. So mm-hmm. those, we have uh, our plastering superintendent has, um, Rich, his name is Rich Bebo. He has his dad, and he has his junior. So it's really nice. We have about four sets of three generations of wow. grandkids and uh just to see the the twenty five years and and really it's it's tradesmen with their sons mm-hmm. and you know we were, that's how it started is no matter what we're gonna go out there no matter where works at everyone's on different jobs and it's actually MEP trades now I mean there's a couple oh, really? electricians a couple you know mm-hmm. duck guys and we we just go out there and we just take time away from work no matter what job we're at and we just you know go out there with our sons and and time goes by fast yeah so my older boy. You know, you keep coming, he keeps coming back and I got my younger ones that they don't want to miss because it's just you know, the father, son time mm-hmm. and it's nice to get away, you know, from, you know, our, our trade. Yeah. You still go to the same lake? Same lake. Yeah. We're out there. It's up to, we average about a hundred people now. So wow, it started out with 10 guys, uh, 25 years ago and, it, you know, grew to 15 to 20 and I would say the last decade it's been a hundred deep every year. Wow. And, you know, Taking full, over that full lake, on, man. Full on t-shirts and, you know, all of our vendors. I mean, they, we have a full, you know, we probably have a thousand dollars of prizes every year and everything's free. It's donations. And basically we give back to, to all the kids mm-hmm. just to keep the kids coming back mm-hmm. so that they under, you know, they know, you know, outdoors, mm-hmm. you know, keep, 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 keep them going. They, yeah. Even them with all the sports and the school and stuff, it's nice for them to, to get away, you mm-hmm. know, from, you know, that they're, their life too so. yeah get some well, mosquito yeah. bites and oh yeah and, uh, some <laughs> some, uh, some yeah. fish slime on them right but, uh, yeah but yeah they have uh for the most part me gordon and actually tim you know we, we've been there for every single year we haven't missed so there's a lot of you know 100 people it's 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 a lot of people yeah so finding time uh uh finding time no matter you know what 
how extensive the job in the middle of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I've somehow always found a way you know, to yeah. go. Yeah. This year is you know, it's just like any other year, especially this year. It's extremely difficult uh, to do, to, mm-hmm. to go, to take, to take that much time off. But um, um, I think it's how you built your team. I have an excellent team that's behind me and they got the support to, you know, to back me up on, mm-hmm. you know, some of the things where, where I won't be. So, yeah. Is Gordon working with you on that project? Gordon, Gordon, he's kind of like a consultant, you know, he, mm-hmm. he's, he's out there. Um, so he's, he's helping me out a, a, a little bit. Is he working the, for Martin? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so he's, uh, he, 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 he like I say, experience, right. Yeah. Experience is golden. Mm-hmm. He has a lot of experience with, uh, uh, a lot of jobs, you know, just difficult things. Mm-hmm. And that's where the experience come, comes in, right? You, you you get some people and some people are afraid to make a decision, you know, once we try this and like, no, no, give, I want, you know, bring some of your experience out. What, what can you do? Gordon's not one to be shy. So he's, you know, he's, mm-hmm. he's golden. I have a couple other people that, you know, have their opinion and, and you know, they, they give some, some just advice because some of the stuff has never been done before. Mm-hmm. So you got to be, you got to be creative. You, gotta, you guys are thinking you, out of the box, man. You got to reach out to different equipment. Yeah. What, what does what? How much weight? Mm-hmm. Um. You know, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot to do. So sure. But it keeps me going. Keeps me. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I like the little change and, you know, if you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, would r- people would run away from, but you just gotta keep digging in every day and and keep it going, get the job done. You've always done that, Mike, and it was. Uh, um, thank you very much for coming no, out here. And I telling appreciate your story. it. This is going to be good stuff, and I, I hope people listen and get, uh, especially the younger guys, yes, to to get the feeling of just you know the trade. The trade's a good thing. Yes, uh, and it's a good feeling, especially when you you at the end of the job and you actually see it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you got some of these bigger jobs. You see them on commercials, and yeah, and you can just pass by with your family and say, you know, you get that feeling. I know when I was younger, like I built that. Yeah, you know, my so. hands touch that. Yeah. And, and I sweat. I, I've got some blood in there, too. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, this is good stuff. And you've told a great story. Again, I, I think I may need to get you in here again after <laughs> hey, the museum. After the done. museum. After the museum. Yeah. And, yeah. and I know that your schedule is super yeah. tight. And uh, you took the time to come yeah. in here to, to be on. No, I appreciate I, you I, asking me. I'm uh, glad to, to I, I have a ton here. of respect for you. Yeah. And um, you're, again, mm-hmm. a super smart guy. I've always just... Uh, really admired you uh, for how you are so progressive and you know again you kick stuff off of me and take some of the suggestions that we give you and um, sometimes run with it yeah you know that's it and sometimes it enhances uh, some other thoughts that you that you guys have too but thank you very much for considering us on that and for coming on the show thank you appreciate Appreciate it it, thanks a lot thanks Mm -hmm.